Next on BYUSN, fall camp is in the books. QB2 is named in a unique situation and which eighth stringer climbed the depth charts all the way up to second string? Kenneth Rooks gets a top 10 finish at the World Championships. He'll join us from Budapest, or is it Budapest? Mm -hmm. Jackson Robinson goes off for 26 points in Italy, plus Jordan Tiffany and Haley Johnson from Swim and Dive join the show. Breakfast at Tiffany, let's go. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store official outfitter, BYU fans everywhere. It is a Wednesday parking situation at Education Week, August 23rd. The worst week. Always fun to find a spot. Luckily, we got in. I am Jerem Jordan. He is famous FaceTime aficionado Jason Shepard. Did you see the Puka Nakua video? Yes. Was awesome. For those that have not seen this, uh, this was part of the, basically the, the Rams. They, they wanted their rookies. It was basically a challenge. Who's basically the most famous person in your phone? Who could you FaceTime right now mm -hmm. from your phone contacts that would be the most famous? And Puka Nakua was able to actually have a, a pretty good one. Can we actually, let's, let's actually watch a little bit of this first. Oh, sorry, did I, was I supposed to tell you guys? I'm calling, calling Uncle Dana White right now. We're gonna go ring all the way through, so <laughs> we might not get an answer. Yo, what's up, my guy? How you doing? <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> By the way, That's, what's up, Unc? What's up, Unc? So he, uh, the Nakuas, grew up in Vegas. Yep. And I believe that uh, one of Dana White's uh, kids is the same age as Puka, Very and close. they played on yeah. some teams or something. So he knows Dana White. Yeah. Wh who is this in your phone, by the way? I was thinking about this. Uh, so besides I, Spencer, <laughs> I, look, I realize you're fishing for me to say you. No, uh, I'm not. It's not gonna happen. No, I'm not. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Um, I actually thought about this. I probably. Because I used to be a sports radio producer, and about uh, probably yeah. 10 years ago, I purged some pretty big numbers because I knew I was never going to call them again. Yeah. I would say now, maybe Jeff Van Gundy. That's a good one. I have Jeff Van Gundy's uh, cell phone number right now. I don't, I'm not going to FaceTime You're not him gonna live face on the show. <laughs> He's like, who is that? But I do have Jeff Van Gundy's number currently in my phone. That's pretty good. I, I don't know that I have like a good uh, kind of non-BYU one at this moment. You know, it'd be it'd be uh, brother for that probably, but it's not. That's that's a look, good one. We yeah. we Facetime one time on this program a couple years ago. There you go. L literally, and that's the, pretty uh, cool oh. though. Unk. Hey, Unk, what's up, Dana Unk? White? That's awesome. <laughs> the man. fact though that he did answer the call and he answered. Yeah, it, it looked like he was in the middle if, of something. Because isn't he always in the middle of something? Probably. If that guy answers, that means that's, there's a real connection yes. there. You're if not you, you're not blowing that uh, Facetime. Yeah, call like off. my wife's barely answering when I Facetime. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's another conversation. <laughs> All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. I love the battles that we're having on offense and defense. When you have this back and forth, that's a good sign for a program. We've become a much better tackling football team. This is the deepest team uh, offensively that we've had since I've been here. When it comes to the game, we got to have the best guys on the field. What's Trending? What's Trending is presented by Feastbox, donating 10% of every order to Full of Hope, a charitable organization that feeds hungry families. Fall camp is over. The Cougars are now in preparation for Sam Houston, head coach Klein Stake, coordinators on offense Aaron Roderick, defense Jay Hill, all talked in a press conference yesterday, Jason. So here's the most interesting stuff. We begin with uh, Aaron Roderick talking about the offensive group. I like where we're at. We have a lot of depth. This is the deepest team uh, offensively that we've had since I've been here. You know, we, we might not have a puka, you know, per se, but I like our depth at every position, and I think we're more equipped to make it through the full season. Now, depth is always used yeah. in fall camp, and Aaron has said this uh, last week and now this week. He's very bullish on this offensive group uh, in terms of its depth. He acknowledged the obvious, which is there's not a, a – uh, NFL receiver sitting there in, at the moment, but perhaps after this, you know, yeah. walking into the season. But um, he's he's a straight shooter, and he says it's a good group. How do you feel about it? I love this offense. I am extremely high on what I think this offense can do and produce this year. So to be able to hear from Coach Roderick that he feels the same, and he talks about the the deepest offense he's had since he's been here at BYU. And you look back on some of the offenses and some of the weapons 
that he's had the opportunity to coach here in Provo, and that's really saying something. And I think what he said at the end, and you just alluded to it, we may not have a puka, but he thinks that the talent that is here may be better equipped to handle the loss of a player. And so I love that, and I, I think that bodes well for this offense, for continuity, uh, for maybe the fact that even if you lose a guy for a game or two, that you're not going to have a drop-off. I like what I'm hearing on the offensive side. And that's important because uh, the receivers have been a little banged up this fall camp. But guys like Darius Lassiter and Keelan Marion have been not only good, they've been available. Yeah. Which last year, BYU walked in the season thinking, okay, we got Puka Nakua, we got Gunnar Romney, we've got Keanu Hill. We didn't know much about Cody Epps. We didn't know much about Chase Roberts. In that position specifically, BYU's feeling very good about the depth, meaning if we put out a couple of different – Parker Kingston, even a Hobbs Nyberg and so on, we feel good about not a lot of production lost, if, if no loss at all. Yeah. So let's go. And when you're playing 10 P5s in a row, you need that. BYU's never encountered the brutality of the schedule week to week like this this year. Well, and maybe while you don't necessarily think maybe you have a Puka now – Maybe somebody provides what Puka did as the season goes on. Maybe somebody Keelan grows Marion into that role. is the most underrated offensive weapon BYU has yeah. at the moment. Like, watch this dude, yeah. number 17. All right, let's talk quarterbacks because everybody likes to talk quarterbacks. We know that the BYU starting quarterback is set. Keaton Slovis is the guy. But Coach Roderick talked about the backup quarterback. Keaton's our starter, and um, – then it's a little bit uh, – we have a little bit of a unique situation at the backup. So Jake Retzloff is our is second with Cade Fennigan third. Um, however, Cade has redshirted before and uh, Jake has not. And so depending on the situation throughout the season, we'll make decisions about who would go in first. Look, I like the transparency, and, and he brings up something that is part of making this decision. Who has eligibility and who's used red shirts and who do you project down the road maybe you want to have for a little bit longer? I, I, I appreciated the honesty there. What did you make of, of what Coach Roderick was talking about in terms of the quarterbacks? We thought Jake Retzloff would win the number two. He's number number one JUCO quarterback in California and uh, the country by some reports. So him being the number two is not a shock, but the idea that they're saying out loud we would like to redshirt him. Yeah. So – we're all on the same page. He can play in four regular season games and the bowl game right. and still redshirt. That would be uh, ideal. And I'll say it again. I don't want to find out how good Jake Redsloff is. <laughs> right. I, unless BYU is just up huge and then Jake comes in. But I don't see a ton of those this year outside of the first two games, we hope. I think there will be a lot of competitive games where Keaton Slovis has got to play wire to wire. This is not 1980s whack where Blaine Fowler's coming in, sweep it up against New Mexico for Robbie Bosco and whatnot, right? But Blaine was ready, should he be needed, in the national championship game of the Holiday Bowl. So uh, interesting that they say that out loud. And Cade Finnegan, we haven't seen him play yet. We thought we'd see him as a starter in the bowl game. It was Bowl J. Mayaba. We might see a little Cade. Who knows? It depends on the situation this year. If Jake has already played in four regular season games by week seven, we, he, he may just continue to play if they need him, and he may not be able to redshirt. I was very interested to find out, when he started talking about the, the depth chart at the quarterback position, I, I was kind of curious to know where Ryder Burton would fall because in, in some of the, the limited you know, reps that we were able to see towards the ends of yes. practice during media We see kind of threes on threes. Ryder so Burton looked really good. He looks good. And, and I was curious if he had moved his way up the, the depth chart a little bit. Now, he's very young. He's got a lot of career left. Uh, so this, this is certainly nothing against him. I, I was very impressed with what I saw from Ryder Burton. The, but, and now there's a redshirt this year. Correct. Like, Ryder yes. should redshirt this year, and then we, I, he, I he competes the, next year. I liked the transparency, and it will be fun yeah. to watch that, depending on the situation, on who gets it, who gets those backup spots, you know, reps, if needed. But I'm with you. The hope is we don't see any backup quarterback. Keaton Slovis is healthy the entire year, and that's the way it goes. That's what you're hoping that's for. That's what we hope for, absolutely. Okay, uh, Aaron Roderick also talked about, as you see some of the quarterbacks in that room, Cade Finnegan. Um, we're not sure on who the fourth string is, whether it's Ryder Burton and Rick Billups. Let's be honest, fourth string doesn't really matter. Just the top, kind of top three, right, are, are the guys that are going to be in the mix in any given game. If you get to that fourth string, you're in some real trouble. But at tight end, there's one player who has shot up the ranks. Aaron Roderick, who is it? Tava Tase is our number two guy right now. He's had a phenomenal camp. 
can't say enough about him. He came in. He came in as our eighth tight end. I just asked for a chance to walk on and did a good job at Southern Utah. And um, Blair Peterson was the OC down there and had coached here with us for a few years. And Blair said good things about him, so we gave him an opportunity to walk on. And all he did was just shoot right up the depth chart every day. He did something to get noticed. He's going to play a lot. I'm not saying he's going to join the ranks of the next guys I'm going to talk about, but walk on tight ends, there's a history of success there with Chad Lewis and Dennis Pitt. I'm not saying Mata Abatai is going to be the next guy there. But the idea of being a walk on, getting an opportunity, and now shining is awesome. Obviously, Isaac Rex is your number one. Uh, Ty S.A. comes from Southern Utah, and he's got an opportunity here. They've liked him at H. That's where Mason Wake played. Mason Wake has hung it up. We're going to miss Mason and his hurdles, right? But Ty S.A. makes a great play Saturday. That's a touchdown catch in the end zone that you see right there. That's exciting. You know who else was eight string, by the way, and climbed One Steve Young at one point. I'm not saying he's going to be a uh, I think it's what you're pro saying. football say hall it, of put famer. Put it out there. Hot take. Say it. <laughs> Ty Essay will be a pro football <laughs> hall of famer. He's getting an opportunity and yeah. took advantage, which is great. And, and BYU needs some excellent blockers that can also catch some footballs. Let's go. Look, good for him. You come into the as, – as a, as a walk-on – and all you're asking for is an opportunity. And then not only do you get the opportunity, but then you take advantage of the opportunity. Look, I heard somebody yesterday saying that, that this is an indictment then on the other guys that he's passed. No, it's not. This is a this is a what, talented what were, what this were is we a expecting from the rest room, of the room, and you've got a guy that came in and has worked and proven himself. It's not an indictment on anybody. Well, no one's no one's proven after Isaac Rex. Right. Like Ethan Erickson made a heck of a catch against ECU that I've referenced. We didn't really see much else from. Ethan Erickson. Right. Uh, Jackson Bowers is a ESPN top 300 kid. He's going to factor in somewhere. There's a lot of talent point. at the tight end position. Yeah, and there's a, Mason Fakahua has switched positions, yep. but like, who's a proven pass catcher blocker that isn't named Isaac Rex Mason Wake at yeah. this point? There is not. So there was a chance there. Whoever says that there wasn't a there wasn't a proven commodity sitting there behind uh, those two guys. Now Mason Wake's gone. One of the positions that at least earlier in the offseason, looked like, okay, starting to get a little panicked here, was the O-line. You ended up losing some guys, obviously, to the NFL, but then also to the transfer portal. I think BYU did quite well bouncing back and, and getting an offensive line that I think is going to be really, really good. And Coach Roderick talked about the depth on the O-line. We have three starters solidified right now. Uh, obviously, Kingsley at left tackle. And then uh, Paul Miley and Connor Pay will be starters as well. And that's, we're, we're certain about that. Those three guys will start. We're still working out, you know, the full starting five and who will play where. Interesting. We've got three starters right yep. now. I was a bit surprised. Now, he, he goes on to talk a little bit more about Caleb Etienne, and he's likely going to be a starter. I, I was a little surprised that it wasn't, an automatic already. I certainly expect that to be for the case. For ETN specifically. Yeah, for ETN specifically. Uh, but, uh, look, I, I mean, I said before, we threw the soundbite, I like what BYU has at the offensive line, especially after losing what you did, the type of talent mm -hmm. that you did, to rebound the way that they have. And not just for what we expect the starters to look like, but from a depth standpoint, I'm, I'm very high on the O-line. BYU did a great job with the O-line in the offseason and in this fall camp so far. It's going to be exciting. If Braden Kime plays right guard, by the way, he's got to be the tallest right guard in the country. <laughs> he's 6'9". Waylon Lapuahu in the mix there as well. Simi Mawala was a starter at Utah. He is not a starter initially here. Like, it's going to take him a sec after sitting out 22 when he transferred to Jackson State and then didn't play there. But uh, there's, some real, there's some real quality in that group, we think. And that's super exciting because if that O-line's good, it gives you a shot on offense yeah. with Keaton Slovis and Aiden Robbins and company. Now, previously, it, it feels like, uh, you know, splitting the reps in practice didn't go to the ones as much. Perhaps that's changed. Perhaps it's the same, but here's Kalani Sitake on that idea. Uh, the ones are going to get all the reps, and, and, and uh, eventually the twos will be able to get some in practice, but... Uh, the ones need all the looks, and the twos are going to have to get some of the looks, but be able to also learn from film and learn from, um, you know, the the uh, being off on the side and seeing it. Um, but yeah, you're right. And then when it comes to the game, we got to have the best guys on the field. 
No more line changes uh, mid-defensive yeah. drive. Um, and, and once you get to end season, it's ones and twos that really, yeah, ones get most of the reps, some of the twos. The threes and kind of fours, that's more fall camp yeah. practice squad, uh, fall camp stuff. Now you're on the practice squad. Those are the reps you're going to give. Well, and that's the interesting part. You know, as he mentioned in the, in the soundbite, the ones are going to get the majority of the time. The twos, they'll get some time. But they, their situation's a little bit different because they're going to have to try and take those mental reps probably more than actual reps because, like, as you want, as he said, you want the best guys on the field. And that goes back to our original point that we talked about earlier in the segment. And you know, we talk about the depth. The hope is you don't have to use your depth. You, you talk about depth a lot. Undoubtedly you will. Yes, you will. Yeah. But the hope is that your guys are healthy and you go through a year where you don't so have to, to – you know, dip your toe into the depth. Certain positions you won't, right? But Jay Hill has said we need – he said to the team the other day in practice, to the defense, he said, and I think he meant the whole team, we need 50 guys to win. We need 50 guys. I, I would guess that's 22 on offense, 22 on defense, and perhaps the six on special teams that, that do the returning, the kicking, the punting, the holding, the snapping, right? 50 dudes. Does BYU have a better 50 this year than last year walking in? I think they do. I think they upgraded across the board. Um, on both sides of the ball in a lot of areas. Obviously, placing Jaron Hall is yeah. tough, but you hope that Keaton Slovis can provide you something very similar uh, to what Jaron did last year. Injuries are always a part of athletics, unfortunately, and it's not just during the season. A lot of times you can deal with injuries in fall camp, and Kalani Satake was asked how the team has come out of fall camp from an injury standpoint. Michael Harbour is the only season-ending injury. Um, we're still evaluating some people to see if they'll be ready uh, for the first game. Probably will know more towards the end of the week. Um, but, yeah, we, we, we're still looking at guys that are banged up. That's good news. You have one player. Unfortunately, it's a big one in Michael Harper. Yeah, Certainly, that was a bummer. It was definitely a bummer. Uh, but good news that overall they've come out healthy. That's good. It's the cost of the violence of the game yeah. um, that you inherently have injuries. You don't want, uh, you know, ACLs uh, in camp, of course. But uh, that, that depth will be checked. And uh, BYU's lining up for Sam Houston in how many days again? Countdown to the Bearcats. Ten days away. Ten, you know, ten days. We have to ten. add the away. Ten. Ten. ten, ten Tomorrow, days. single digits. Okay, tomorrow, single digits. How about that? Our question of the day is this. What do you feel like you know about this BYU football team now that you didn't know at the start of fall camp? Travis J. Larson on Facebook. The emergence of net. Wasn't it going to be meta, by the way? No, uh, it's no still Meta, Meta is still like the overall company yes. that has it. Okay. I don't know if Facebook was changing. I just want all of them to change the name now that we're dealing with the Twitter exit. <laughs> the emergence of now second string tight end Ty Essay is unparalleled. Former walk-on projected eighth string when he arrived. He obviously played well, quickly earned the respect of his teammates and coaches. Excited to see what he can do behind Rex. Go Kooks. He's going to be one of those guys that you're like, wait, who is that? Yeah, he's, he's going to be a player this year. Continue to weigh in using uh, hashtag BYSN on X, Facebook, and Instagram. And or Meta, depending on if they ever change depending that, right? Depending on what you do. Watch the latest episode of After Further Review, where Dave McCann, Blaine Fowler, and David Nixon break down the best plays from impact players such as Ben Bywater, Max Tooley, and others. Watch it anytime on demand on the BYU TV app. After the break, Kenneth Rooks joins us live from Budapest, Hungary, after taking 10th in the track and field world championships last night. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is sponsored by Beast Box Global Grill, a unique dining experience featuring Texas, Hawaiian, and Korean meats. Time to feast. What Kenneth Rooks did over the weekend is on a tier of its own. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. We're live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day Cougar Sports play-by-play. -play. Jeremy Jordan, Jason Shepard. How was your summer? Was it good? My summer was good. Yeah, mine was good, too. Yeah. Uh, none of our summers, yours included, were as good as our next guest's summer. Uh, Kenneth Rooks won the NCAA title, the USA title, and last night took 10th in the steeplechase at the World Track and Field Championships. He now joins us from Budapest, Hungary. Kenneth, how was your summer, man? <laughs> Hey, it, it was an awesome summer. It was a, it was a little bit uh, hectic at times, you know, just 
with uh, figuring out training and life and everything. It's been awesome, though. It's been fun to be able to come to the World Championships and to be here in Budapest for the last week and a half. And uh, it, it's, been, it's been really fun. All right, so we will certainly get to the race in a second. What is, uh, look, I've never been out of the United States outside of maybe like 30 minutes into Mexico. So I, I, that counts. That, it it yeah. does count. Yeah, what is Budapest like? Give, mm -hmm. give us an idea of what it's like to be over there. Well, uh, it's, it's a little bit humid, not like super humid, but it's, it's a little humid. Um, it's been about 90 degrees um, every day um, that's as, as the high-ish generally around there we've had a few thunderstorms if, if the, i guess if you're looking for the climate um but it's a it's a cool um area um they have some some history here some some old uh parts to the city and and whatnot there's been a lot of history um there's a lot of museums i've seen i've seen some of the stuff uh, i mean my, my main focus coming here to budapest was to run but i've been able to get out and see a few things so it's it's cool it's my first time in europe and uh yeah, it's been a great experience. It's the, the summer of Cougs in Europe uh, because the men and women's basketball team are in Italy. And Jimmer Fredette's actually in Budapest right now. I, do you need me to connect you two for lunch or something? <laughs> well, actually, there was a guy I ran into who uh, actually um, sat next to Jer sat close to Jimmer on the flight on uh, when he was coming into Budapest here. So nice. he told me that. I can't, I can't remember him, but I met him at the meets. Uh, the guy, not Jimmer, but um, yeah, it's 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 cool. Lots of, got lots of people around here right now. Really meeting people though, stuff. Kenneth, who have been next to Jimmer is basically the same as meeting Jimmer. <laughs> like it's it's, it's you okay. get that connection. Like I would say I is met it? Jimmer if is I it? met somebody that was sitting next to you. You can do better. You could, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so take us through the race. You finished tenth, as Jerem said. H how did you view your tenth place finish? Yeah, so I I, uh, I felt really good in the prelim. Uh, I am really happy with how that went, um, and I can't. I went into the final with a lot of confidence that I can run with these guys. Um, that I am, I'm fit, and I I mean I I usually make good decisions in the race, and so. I, I went into the race thinking that I could I could be uh, in that in that top five and you know if everything lined up maybe I could uh, get um, a third place spot um, but um, yeah it, it just in in the race I I knew kind of what people were doing I knew that uh, when people started to move they were going to be making a hard push with four laps to go and I hang for a little bit but when we hit a K to go I started to kind of lose contact it just it just got tough after that that point um and uh my hurdling wasn't quite feeling 100 percent great and uh it was it was it was good it was a great experience um it i finished 10th i i think i'm capable of finishing higher but um i did what i could that day and that's how it ended up um, and there's, there are decisions in the race probably I could have done differently that maybe I could have placed a little bit better, but, um, that's, that's what ended up happening. I'm really grateful for this opportunity to get the experience out here competing at the world championships, um, going through this, this whole year, I've had an amazing season. I'm so grateful for all that has happened and I'm grateful for the things that I have learned and. We'll continue to learn. I would have liked to end on a little bit, maybe place a little bit higher, but 10th in the world is pretty amazing. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's, it uh, is. It's, a pretty, it, it's, it's pretty amazing. And so I can, I can uh, be really grateful and really excited about that. And, uh, yeah, lots of, lots of good things to look forward uh, to in the future. That's a great summary of what has happened because this has been the summer of Kenneth Rooks. Um, how would you – so, well, did you have a moment th this week or at the track or whatever where you've been able to kind of take it and realize what has gone so well for you this summer? Because seeing you rep the USA, obviously winning the NCAA and the United States Championships, and then being the final at the World Championships, like, you're still a BYU student. Like, next Tuesday you're going to be in some random class and some kid uh, from Utah County is going to have no idea who they're sitting next to. 
Well, may, maybe not quite next Tuesday. I think the Tuesday uh, Tuesday after that. You're uh, right. School You're right. Him back to school. Yeah, he's yet. like, I'm in Europe. Relax. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's pretty cool. I mean, I, at the end of the day, like, yeah, I've been successful with running, but one thing that, especially that you, you learn, I guess, being, I mean, being here, being with all the, the guys on the team and uh, at the, on the USA team and even uh, with the guys at BYU, um, we're just, we're normal guys. Uh, we're normal people. We do, we do normal things. Uh I mean, we, we have been successful, but it, I guess it's important to remember that we're also normal people too. And so, yeah, the cross that's what I'd say about that. The cross-country season begins in a little over two weeks. So when you, when you look back on, and I keep wanting to say the summer of George, a Seinfeld reference, the summer, the summer of Rooks. It's the summer of Ken with the, Barbie you know, and yes, Kenneth Rooks. Yes, yes, exactly. But when you look back on the last couple of months, how has that prepared you for this upcoming BYU season, it's prepared me a lot. It's it's put me. It's uh, my experiences uh, this um, this this year have helped um, like help me. I guess in, increase my vision of where I can end up and um, what I'm capable of, and it's helped me um, you know stretch my goals a little bit. Uh, it's, I mean, it, I, it's been great experience, uh, just being competing with some world-class people, um, and, and being able to, uh, go through the mental preparation to do all that. And, uh, I, I feel like I've grown a lot, uh, with just getting in better shape, but also I've grown mentally and, uh. I can take that with me um, as I go forward into into the rest of my life, but even into this next this next season with cross country and with whatever lies ahead. Um, and cross country itself is a little bit of a different beast because it's a it's a different race. You do eight or ten k um, out there on the course, and uh, so it's a little bit different. Uh, but it's the it's the same prince same basic principles and. Um, I feel a lot stronger, feel like I've learned a lot um, because of that. And I've been able to, um, you know, be a good example and bless many people's lives through my example and what I've been able to do. And um, and that's humbling. And I'm excited to be able to continue to do that in, in many ways. A so. couple of notes. Uh, one, this is acceptable red. We accept it. It's the United States. It's not the red of another team. Uh, two, I ran into Connor Mance and the boys before they were going out on a run. They were wondering where you were, so you probably need to follow up with them. Um, and then three, in your wildest, did you imagine you'd be at this point, at any point, let alone at BYU, with an opportunity perhaps to return to Europe and Paris in the Olympics next year? Well, I mean, there's certain points in my life where I, I definitely did not did not think that I'd be here. I mean, in high school, when I first started running, I I didn't really... I mean, I ran, but I didn't really love it, and I wasn't really sure about running in college. But my junior year, my mindset kind of changed, and um, I worked toward um, getting a scholarship, and I got a scholarship in running in college. But even when I first got to college, like I, I didn't think that I'd be, I didn't think that I'd be here at the World Championships and and uh, be a national champion. But um, you know, I, I. Just as things have gone on and I've been more successful, I've had a really good freshman season, made it to the NCAA championships in the steeplechase. And I mean, at that point, I started to think, well, I could be a national champion someday. And, and um, you know, maybe maybe I might be able to, at some point, if, if I keep working, uh, get to the world or the Olympics. But there, yeah, one of my one of my friends actually in, in high school, his name's Tristan Lamelli. he always... He always was telling me since my freshman year in high school, he's like, you're going to the Olympics. You're going to be in the Olympics. So, and he's, he, he might be right. So he might be it's, right, it's baby. Cool <laughs> and so uh, it's, uh, it's cool that I'm in this position and I was able to, to be here at the world championships. Even at the, at the beginning of the season, I thought that I could make it to the world championships, but I, I didn't know that I'd, I'd win the U S championship and, um, I thought that I had a shot at me at winning that NCAA championship and I did, um, and I, I, I wasn't expecting necessarily to make the final or anything. And, uh, it's, it's been exciting. 
Uh, it's It's been um, a great season, and it's cool to think of the opportunities I have ahead with maybe making it to the Olympics next year as well. So. Well, Walla Walla, the home of Onion Rings and Kenneth Rooks. We appreciate the time. Safe travels back, and uh, we'll see you in uh, whatever class in uh, a couple of weeks. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thanks, R Kenneth. Kenneth Rooks. Well, the season, the summer of Ken. Yeah. The summer of Kenneth Rooks. Like, what a year he has had. And then next year, at this time, minus a couple of weeks, yeah. we could be talking about in the Olympics, baby. In the Olympics. Just think about the question you asked him, though. You're at the, you're at the World Championships. You, you've had so many things happen over the last couple of months. And then in another week and a half, you're just going to be in class. You're just, a, you're you just, just another right guy in life. Econ 207 or whatever. <laughs> I, I don't even know. Like, that is uh, American Heritage? What are you doing here? Yeah. Like, that is so awesome. Congratulations to Kenneth Rose. A, a very quick plug. Uh, we are relaunching the Deep Blue podcast yeah, baby. on BYU Radio. With and, a better host. <laughs> and Kenneth, <laughs> Kenneth is one of our very first shows. Awesome. Uh, and, and by the way, a little, little tease of that. Uh, he's been he's been a Kenny before, never a Ken. Never a Ken. Kenneth or Kenny. But to me, he's a ten. Okay. As we learned nice. from Ryan Gosling. Very nice. Yeah. All right. Number eleven, BYU women's soccer looks to move to three and zero to begin the season as they host Long Beach State tomorrow night at South Field. You can watch at eight Eastern time on Big Twelve now on ESPN Plus. Oh, there's Defensive Player of the Week, Kendall Peterson. Coming up, Jackson Robinson goes off in Game Two in Italy for men's hoops. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU Sports Nation is sponsored by the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Follow BYU Sports Nation on social media for content throughout the day on Facebook, X, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and Threads. Speaking of, in that uh, scenic shot over campus, the Abraham Smoot Building, or ASB, mm -hmm. they used to call it the X Building because it's just a big old X. Little did we know it was actually Is that where Elon got the Twitter. idea? Yeah, he, yeah, he, uh, he saw the, the ASB. Not. Welcome back to Studio B. I'm Jeremy. He's Jason. Let's get to today's headlines presented by Tim Daly Nissan, part of the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Head coach Kalani Satake, offensive coordinator Aaron Roderick, and defensive coordinator Jay Hill spoke to the media yesterday to wrap up BYU football's training camp as BYU counts down the days to the season opener against Sam Houston. Kalani said he loves the balance he saw during camp between the offense and the defense. And I love the battles that we're having on offense and defense, uh, meaning that not one side is dominating the other. Uh, which is a good sign and then when one is having success the other one's able to respond and and so when you have this back and forth that's a good sign for a program and, and you see everybody getting better at the same time. BYU also had seven players named to the Senior Bowl watch list this morning. Players include Keaton Slovis, Ben Bywater, Max Tooley, Isaac Rex, Connor Pay, Caleb Etienne, and Ian Fitzgerald. Uh, Kenneth Rooks took 10th at the World Athletic Championships in the men's steeplechase last night in Budapest. We just talked to him live from Budapest. Also, Zach McWhorter will compete today for Team USA in the pole vault. Good luck to Zach. With a 2-0 start to the season, BYU women's soccer climbed two spots to number 11 okay. in the latest United Soccer Coaches poll. BYU's next game is against Long Beach State tomorrow night at the stadium at Southfield at 9 Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. Are they calling it that now? I saw it on the graphic. It's at oh. Stadium at Southfield. Well, there's been some debate over the years. We can talk another time. Okay. okay. Also, okay. congratulations to BYU senior defender Kendall Peterson, who earned Big 12 Co-Defensive Player of the Week. Men's basketball beat Palacanestro Trieste, 84-73 in Game 2. I asked Spencer Johnson. No, just kidding. Went on his mission to Rome. In Game 2 of the foreign tour in Italy and Croatia, the Cougars made 19 threes, led by Jackson Robinson's 26 points, a couple of dunks there, on 6 of 13 from distance. 
BYU softball's Maddie Bejarano was invited to play for the Mexican national team. Congrats to Maddie. And earlier this morning, head coach Gordon Eakin announced the hiring of Ken Brook as a new assistant coach. Brook spent the last two seasons as the hitting coach at Auburn. Kens are winning everywhere. Yes, they are. And the Big 12 announces a partnership with U.S. Integrity uh, that will play a pivotal role in preventing student athletes, coaches, and staff from engaging in prohibited sports wagering. There have been some issues in the Big 12 reported recently. Also, Tomasi Laulile, released by the Niners, but signed by the Broncos. Pretty cool. Those are today's headlines. Now let's whip it. Google Whip Around is presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Don't like this one. I'm going to be honest with you. ESPN's Bill Connolly and Dave Wilson both put out their Big 12 standings projections. Both picked the Cougars dead last, number 14 in the Big 12 Conference. How many spots higher do you expect BYU to finish compared to their projection? Yeah, I, I think if you finish last, you are 0-9 in the league, 1-8, maybe 2-7. I, I, I see BYU no worse than 3-6 and, and as high as 5-4 and four in the league. So I, I think they'll be significantly higher than that. I'm expecting four to five spots higher. I'm expecting like 10 or higher. Like 10 or 11th? Ten, yeah, I, I think they will be 10 to or me, higher. To me, that's you're probably like three and six there. If you're four and five, you're creeping up into the kind of the eight and nine range out of the 14 teams, I think. There'll be a lot of parody. It'll be the land of nine and three overall records, probably. <laughs> On Hard Knocks, Zach Wilson said he wears a headband to avoid sweat in his eyes. Do you believe it's more fashion or function? I believe, Zach, that it is function, that it does help with the sweat out of the eyes. But let's be honest, but it's also a good look. It's kind of cool. It's kind of a cool look. Yeah. Something he can yeah. get away with that I cannot. <laughs> yes. He he's, makes it look he's cool. He's got swag that we in, I would we look do not stupid. Have. So, but I agree. I think. Bring, bring out the headband. <laughs> oh, we don't have it. I think it is function, but with yeah. with with the cool factor. Too. It's it's uh, it's it's both. Yeah. All right. A piece was written in the San Francisco Chronicle with the opinion that Cal and Stanford could bring together universities from across California to fo to form a new college sports powerhouse. Okay. The California Conference is what they would call it. What do you make of this, Jerem? It has UC uh, Davis in it. So Stanford and Cal have, have really wanted to not have BYU in the Pac-12 for a long time, and now they would love to have UC Davis. No, that's not what they would want. Cal and Stanford uh, need the ACC or they're going to be in trouble. Uh, there is nothing about this that would be a new college sports powerhouse. No. So we need to stop I think they right should there. get El Camino Junior College in there, <laughs> Long Beach State out of the Big West, UC Davis, San Jose State. Look, you may and have more now clout. we're talking. You may have more clout if you bring in some of those high-profile high school teams. Matter Day is Modern Day is coming in. California Cody Epps would, would back that move, right? <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> Kenneth Rooks, uh, you know, ran in the World Championships last night. There was a big watch party over at the Student Athlete Building, which is pretty cool. Liz Darger tweeted out a photo. Do you think they do that for this show sometimes? I would hope that they're doing it as we speak right now. Yeah, I think every day that's what it's like over there, just consuming this program. If I had known that was going on, I would have gone over there. I was actually just sitting in my office watching it uh, on my uh, on my computer. <laughs> you would have you would have been in there. Yeah, you're the you're the guy. You're the track guy every year for the uh, the, for the prestigious Pugsley Award. That's right. Absolutely, That's right. I, I did it one or two years. It was a great privilege. How about this? The Tennessee Titans quarterback Will Levis. This is so gross. <laughs> signed a lifetime deal with Hellman's Mayonnaise yesterday. <laughs> if you could sign a lifetime mayonnaise. deal with any condiment, which would you choose? Okay, I do like uh, Whataburger spicy ketchup. Okay. It's not like crazy spicy. It's just like a little more kick than the average ketchup, right? Yeah, and I don't want to bring this up on national television, but you worldwide will. television. Yeah. Um, I think you were supposed to get me one of those, and I never got it. Was I really? Yeah. Did I say that I would? Yeah. And I just still never really? had it. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. Well, I'll order another three pack, and one is yours. They do come in three packs, right? You cannot buy it individually online. It's three packs only. Okay. It's like a on. Costco kind of. So mentality. that's where you yeah. would go. That's what you would want the endorsement. I think so. Spicy ketchup, whatever. Yeah. Like, my, my, my favorite condiment is, is ketchup. Okay. Like, it's one of the many things that Patrick Mahomes and I have in common. Yes. Uh, he's so a big, many things. big ketchup guy. Amazing right I, arms. I, too, am a big ketchup guy, so I would go ketchup. Okay. Like, you can't go wrong with ketchup. No, no. Catsup, no. Ketchup, yeah, yes. Yeah, what, what is that? Why I is that a know. thing? I don't know. Growing up, we had, yeah, these jars that would say catsup. I'm like, what, what is this? Is this even it's the same thing? Is this made thing? of cats? What is I, this? I, it was a little scary at times. Okay, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Coming up, Swim and Dive heads to the Big 12. Tennessee transfer Jordan Tiffany and diver Haley Johnson will join us to tell what the competition's like. 
Let's go, baby. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Jerem Jordan, Jason Shepard. Let's talk some swim and dive. They've been in the MPSF, the same men's volleyball league that we talk about a lot, right? Mountain Pacific Sports Federation. They go to the Big 12 as well. And here to tell, walk us through the competition and what that's going to be like is Jordan Tiffany and Haley Johnson. Welcome to the show, guys. Great to have you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having us. <laughs> okay, let's start with, uh, Haley, the, the Big 12. Like, okay. you, you were never in the West Coast Conference. They didn't have that. You were in the MPSF. Yeah. Now you go to the Big 12. What's that like for uh, a diver like yourself to be Ooh. in the league of the Big 12 in swimming and diving? Yeah, I feel like it's, it's definitely a new challenge. There's a lot of great schools like Texas A&M and TCU, and it's cool because they're just some really top-notch divers that we're competing against now. Um, and not only that, but it's super exciting because we get to do more platform because, of course, the RB doesn't have a 7 or a 10 meter, and so being in the Big 12 gives us, an, gives us an opportunity to be on the 7 and 10 meter platform. So it's really exciting to be kind of working on those events more too. So they have different diving competitions than the MPSF had, you're saying? No, they have the same events, okay. but since we're going to kind of bigger schools, we're going to get an opportunity to compete that more. So Gotcha. Yeah. O overall, all from from swim and dive perspective how how do you feel like it's going up in a level of competition like how how do you guys view the big 12 in terms of the competition that you'll face week in and week out yeah i mean at least on the men's side texas is always top of the big 12 they've won i think 14 national titles 40 big 12 titles in a row um, it's in a, a big, row? In a row? Yeah, yeah. I think well, it's 40. 40 or 44. Well, they'll be gone soon uh, yeah. after this year, so that won't yeah. be a problem. <laughs> so, I mean, there's a lot better teams, more teams than the MPSF, and so we're just excited to step up the competition. You know, we've won three titles in a row. I haven't been a part of any of those titles because this upcoming season's my first year. Um, but hopefully we can carry that momentum and turn some heads this next year. And let's talk about that. Yeah. You were at Tennessee. Yeah. You're from Pleasant Grove. You went to Lone Peak. Yep. You, you came home. Yep, why, why come back to BYU? Right. I've lived here my whole life. My parents both swam at BYU. All my aunts swam at BYU. Um, I graduated in 2020, went to University of Tennessee, had a great experience. Um, super happy with my time out there. And then came back, took a gap year, worked through some things. I, I never thought I'd swim again. Um, when I left Tennessee, I kind of said that was the end of it. And then God had a different path, um, a lot of miracles along the way. And, and now I'm back. I redshirted this past year, joined the team halfway through last season. Um, and this will be my first year back competing in a couple of years. Is, so you've had the experience of, of competing at this level in a P5 conference. Do, do, you, do you think that helps you going, making this transition with the, with the Cougars? Right, yeah. I mean, I think that's another big blessing about this year. Like, I'm grateful to take my experience in the SEC, some high-pressure situations, and just being involved on the powerhouse program like Tennessee and just take what I learned and hopefully help out BYU as much as I can. Um, I'm just super excited. Can you give us a, a, a little insight into sort of the miracle that was you returning to swimming? Yeah, I mean, it's a longer story than this, but I left Tennessee totally down, never wanting to swim again, just putting it to rest after I'd been like, you know, my life dream to swim at a big school like that. Um, came back, took a gap year, uh, just a miracle I got into BYU without swimming or anything. And it's, it's November of last year. And I, I have this feeling, okay, maybe I should come back to swim. I start texting my coach. I'm sitting outside the SAB, the student athlete building. And I look up and Sherry, the, the head coach, is right in front of me. And like I hadn't seen her in two years. Um, just a miracle that was. And she said, hey, come in my office. Let's talk, catch up a little bit. And from there, I started swimming every day. Um, I'm swimming better than I ever have, having more fun than I ever have, surrounded by amazing teammates, coaches. It just It's been a big blessing. That's awesome. Yeah. Welcome back, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> so, Haley, so you have... You guys, your family, big, 
BYU fans. You had yeah. a sister that was a was a diver. Yes. And, Megan yeah. and Rebecca. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and you had you have a sister that was a cheerleader. Yes. So, so take me through take me through the family and just how big it is for you guys to be involved with BYU. Yeah. Um definitely my my dad went to BYU. My both my siblings were athletes here. It's actually funny because growing up I never wanted to go to BYU and I was actually committed to another school before I came here. Um, but Not then one in red, was it? It was one in red, but <laughs> <laughs> red and blue. So, uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, a ton of my friends came here and my siblings came here. And I guess just hearing their experiences and what great times that they had here, it kind of pushed me to come here. And I don't know, kind of like Jordan, I just kind of felt like there was a different plan for me um, than the one that I had for myself. And it brought me here and it's it's been great my family's been super supportive I got a ton of hand-me-downs for my siblings it's nice. great Very so nice. it's tons awesome. of BYU swag I imagine oh yeah <laughs> Jordan, your mom held the 800 record in the WAC in BYU forever uh -huh. was she like your swimming role model growing up like was she one of the top influences for you yeah she taught me how to swim when I think I was four or five she was my high school coach my club coach when I was a little kid so we've always been super close all my big memories growing up were with her um, so it is a full circle moment to kind of go to Tennessee and then come back and swim where my parents swam and be able to look up to them. Um, Sherry, the head coach, actually coached my mom. When she Did she really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. So it's amazing. That's cool. Mm -hmm. When you guys, there, look, it, regardless of the sport, there's no more off season anymore. Everybody's, <laughs> you know, practicing and doing whatever, whatever their individual sport is, they're, they're doing that pretty much year round. How much does it add now that school's getting back in session and now you sort of add that on top of everything as well as getting ready to compete? How, how does that change things now? Oh, it's, it's definitely intense. It's stressful. You know, it's, it's a balance being a student athlete, trying to balance school and um, diving and everything. And so it, I think it's definitely a little more stressful, it's ex but it's exciting because there's a lot more opportunity being in the Big 12 now. So, Yeah, I mean, we there is no off-season swim-wise, dive-wise, yeah. but... Uh, Luckily, we're just really supported. Amazing staff here. Um, Brian, who's over swims, helped us out a lot and makes it manageable, and we love it. Well, we're excited uh, to see the season. We've got the alumni meet coming up September 9th and the blue and white meet September 15th. Then you're in it. Then you're a Big 12 team competing. Yeah. Haley and Jordan, we appreciate the time. Thanks for coming in. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Awesome. All right, if you missed any interviews, Deep Blues, shows, or games, you can find them on BYUSN.com, or you can download the BYU TV app to get all of the BYU TV sports content on demand. Coming up, today's Rise and Shout. Shout out who gets it. This is BYU Sports Nation. It's that guy. <laughs> BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is on demand. Download the free BYU TV and BYU radio apps, or you can listen to the podcast while you're there. We ask, please subscribe, rate, and review. We'd like a nice review, uh, but that's up to you. Uh, our question of the day, what do you feel like you know about this BYU football team now that you didn't know at the start of fall camp? Jason Roberts on X. Still not used to that. New to the team guys, including younger players like LJ Martin, yeah. are solid and will make significant contributions this year and provide needed depth. I'm really excited about LJ. Like, the, the top, okay, he was the number 17 running back in the country. Yeah. BYU gets him because he's committed to Texas Tech, gets out of that, he commits to Stanford, David Shaw resigns, and BYU beat Stanford twice that night um, in getting LJ, and he is going to be a tremendous player at BYU. I'm so excited to see him play. Yeah. And he's climbed the charts a little bit as yes. well. There have been some injuries in that room as well. So it's it's good to have, again, depth where here's, here's a kid who could be a big-time player here in the future. I love the talent that BYU was able to bring in via the portal at running back and at wide receiver. I... I thought, the, and I've said this before on the show, I thought the wide receiving group was going to be good anyway. And then you bring in, you know, Lassiter, yep. you bring in these other guys, and it just strengthens it even more. You needed some depth there. Yes. And you really got it. Yeah. Okay, our elite voice of the day is presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated, Nolan Mickelson on Facebook. I feel better about Slovis, and that to me is all I need to know. I would argue, given BYU's history recently, that you always need a backup. Uh, and we know it's Jake Retzloff, but yes, Nolan feeling good about Slovis. 
He needs to be good, absolutely. Today's Rise and Shoutout is, is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. As BYU track and field and cross country tweeted out yesterday, our Ken is Knuff. What a summer <laughs> for Kenneth Rooks. The NCAA title, the USA title, and then took 10th. You can hear a little disappointment in his voice, Shep, that he wasn't kind of in the mix a little more at the end there, maybe in the top five or even pressing for the podium. But our boy took 10th in the world in the steeplechase. I mean, what a summer for Kenneth Rooks. What an experience. And look, that's the kind of stuff that you can never, regardless of the finish, you will never be able to take away the memories of what he's done. And he's, and he's not done. He's, and he's not done. He could be in the more. Olympics he's next year. He's got a lot more that he can still do. Our thanks to today's guests, Kenneth Rooks, Jordan Tiffany, and Haley Jones. Conversation continues 24-7 on X, Instagram, and Facebook. This and all of our shows are on demand on BYUSN.com. Sorry to Dennis Bitter, we ran out of time. For Jason, I'm Jeremy. Shout out to Zach Frampton. It's the summer of Cougs in Europe as well. Go Cougs!